Hey everyone, I hope you're all doing really well. Today I'm gonna to be sharing with you some makeup empties. I have a ton of makeup products here in front of me. I was going to actually film a full on empties video, like all beauty related categories inclusive, but when I was breaking things up, I realized I have so many makeup empties from the last like four months or so because I filmed my last empties video back in the very end of May and so I've been slacking, I've been slacking on filming empties and somehow I have acquired a many, a many of products. So we have a pretty significant amount of items just in the makeup category alone. So I figured I would break things up, make it a little, little shorter of a video. I'm sure it's gonna be <laughs> a bit long because I do wanna share with you some of my thoughts, reflections, and whether or not I would repurchase these items and kind of some insights on how long some of them took me to use up as well. But before we get on into it, I do just wanna say a huge thank you to today's sponsor, which is Skillshare. And if you haven't yet checked out Skillshare, even though I've been talking about them over the past few months, you definitely do need to go and check them out because I've now been a member for a full year. I've been working with them for the past three months, but I have been my own independent member of Skillshare for a long time and it's been something that's extremely valuable in my creative journey over this past year. I absolutely love Skillshare. Like I adore it and that's why this sponsorship is just so special and so absolutely perfect to me. So I do definitely recommend you go and check them out. But if you're not familiar with what Skillshare is, of course I want to share with you what it is so you can kind of get to know it a little bit from a surface kind of value before you get on into it. It is an online learning community where you can take literally thousands of classes on any topic that you could be interested in, any topic that you've already explored in some other capacity, whether you're a newbie or you are a master, you can find even more information and get to know anything better with Skillshare, truly. Like, I mean it. There are courses on so many different creative kind of topics like photography, illustration, graphic design, but then there's also topics related to cooking, recipes, productivity, time management, literally the list goes on and on. If you are interested in it or if you want to kind of deepen your skills and knowledge of a topic, you can find it on Skillshare. And it's an amazing platform because there are no ads and you can really cater Skillshare and how you interact with Skillshare to your own personal kind of journey as well. I have really liked that I can kind of take classes and approach them in very bite-sized amounts if I want to, or I can sit down and watch the entire class in an hour, depending on what the topic is. It is truly a really great platform if you are a lifelong learner, or if you're somebody who wants to just constantly be exploring, growing, and learning new things. I think we all know I'm a little bit of a plant person. I have a small selection of my plants here. However, I actually have quite a large selection of plants in my home. I have a mini jungle, not gonna lie. And I'm going to continue to acquire plants, but even throughout this journey, I wish that when I first started that there was some sort of resource that really just kind of overviewed how to care for plants and how to better understand plants and the benefits of having plants in your house as well. So I recently watched an amazing class which was by Christopher Griffin. It is called Plants at Home, Uplift Your Spirit and Your Space. And this was such a good class that even though I'm somebody who has had plants for several years, I feel like this is something that would have been very beneficial for me when I first started and it's beneficial for me here at this point in my kind of journey with plant collecting, plant ownership, plant acquiring. It, it was such a fun class because it was truly informative, but it was also just really fun to watch Christopher talk about and have that passion for plants while teaching me how to better understand how to care for the plants that I have and the future plants that I might bring into my life. It was only 50 minutes long, which is great, but it was packed with so, so much information. I ended up watching it in two of my lunch breaks over this past week. Of course, I recommend that class and all the classes that I've talked about throughout this sponsorship period, but there are always new classes being added as well on Skillshare, and that is just one of the biggest benefits to me is that there's endless opportunities to grow and to learn. Whether you're a beginner or a newbie, 
you can find something super interesting and kind of just delve into that world. And I absolutely love Skillshare for that because I am the kind of person who is going to always want to be learning and growing. So if you are like myself, you are in luck because the first 1000 of my subscribers will get a one month free trial of Skillshare Premium on Skillshare. So definitely go and check out the link in my description box and as well as in the pinned comment of today's video so that you can unlock all of that creative potential and you can start growing and learning and exploring through Skillshare today. A massive, massive thank you to Skillshare for sponsoring today's video. Let's hop on into all the empties that I have in front of me. We're going to talk about a primer first. This is the Urban Decay Optical Illusion Primer. I'm finally done with this. I had this in my 20 favorites for 2020 project pan. You saw it was kind of slow going with this product in that project pan, but I'm finally done with it. I had only, you know, maybe this much left of product since the beginning of 2021. So I kind of was sleeping on it for the beginning part of this year because I had been using it for all of 2020, but I finally decided it was time to finish it off. No more will come out of here. It, oh, actually a little bit more did. Okay, that's it no more will come out of here. I was like, what? <laughs> Last time I tried to pump it, that was the same case, but a little bit just came out. I can show you actually then. It's a smoothing primer, but it's not your standard kind of smoothing primer that feels very heavy on the skin or mattifies the skin. It truly offers a very balanced kind of look to the skin, but look how well it smooths and makes everything look kind of blurred, but it's not that soft silicone -y feeling that kind of just feels very slippery. It just allows product to glide on top of it in a very natural kind of way. And I really enjoyed it. You can see the difference in the smoothing kind of capability. Unfortunately, I do believe that this is a discontinued formula, which is really disappointing because this was a formula that I truly, truly loved. It worked with all and every foundation, even when I use just powder as a foundation or tinted moisturizer, this worked with absolutely every formula and I really, really enjoyed it right down to the very last pump right now. <laughs> I really did enjoy it. The next product I have here is a tinted moisturizer, which paired very beautifully with this primer and with so many other primers in my collection. This is my hands down absolute favorite complexion product. It is the Bare Minerals Complexion Rescue. This one I have here is in the shade Vanilla 02, but earlier this year I did finish off another one, which I believe was called Natural 05. And this is actually a little bit more generous than the typical foundation, and you do not need a lot of product in order to get a beautiful finish on the skin. This one had 35 milliliters in it, so yeah, it's just a little bit bigger than your standard foundation, but it offers a little bit of SPF. I do not recommend relying on this for your SPF, but it does have SPF 30 in it for that little bit of extra sun protection. And it just offers the most beautiful look on the skin that doesn't look makeup-y at all. My skin looked so healthy, so happy with this without being overly dewy or overly oily. It just was this perfect natural finish. And I feel like it offered a finish that worked in so many different contexts. I could wear it all through the winter when my skin is a little bit more dry and I can wear it all through the summer when my skin is more oily and it just works no matter what. It works alongside any concealer, any powder, any primer. It truly is like the one and only complexion product I think I need in my life. I love it. I miss it dearly right now. I haven't had this in my life for a couple of months. And truly, as soon as I'm off my no buy and I've kind of, I'm hoping to work through some other kind of base products, but by the time I finish off other base products in my life, I'm coming back to this one. I saw that Sephora currently has 20% off foundations and I was seriously tempted to repurchase this, but I do have one other tinted moisturizer that I'd like to finish off or at least make a little bit more progress on before I finish or before I repurchase this rather. I adore this. I recommend this to not only people on the internet, but to people in my personal life all the time because it truly is the best complexion product in my opinion. Next up, let's talk about the Kapari Lip Glossy. This looks really filthy. It looks really actually quite gross because it's been in my empties bag for a while. I guess this technically is not really a makeup product per se. It's more of a lip balm, but I kind of use it as both these days because it is more of like a clear gloss kind of formula. And I oftentimes just throw this on as my standalone lip product. 
I cut into this because I wanted to use up every last possible drop. This is one of my tried and true favorites. This is definitely not the first of these that I have finished off in the past few years. This is maybe like my third or fourth. And I have another one kicking around somewhere. I love this stuff so much. It feels very nourishing on this on the lips. It offers a really hydrated feeling without being like, I don't know, sticky. And it truly is reparative as well. I've had times when my lips were very chapped, very uncomfortable from the cold winter. And I've had even like reactions on my lips to products as well. And this has always soothed them and made them feel really good, really hydrated and actually offered some quick turnaround to repairing my lips as well. It's, it's a tried and true, it's a forever repurchase for me. And again, one of those products that I recommend endlessly. I actually have three mascaras that I finished off in the past few months. This first one is the Mineral Fusion Volumizing Mascara in the shade Jet. Quite honestly, I'm not entirely sure that I finished this. I kind of just let this go bad. This is something that was a little bit lackluster to me. So I had opened it, tried it, I think in a first impressions video, and I will link that down in the description box. And it really just was subpar to me. I didn't really end up reaching for it that, that frequently until um, I realized I had had it in my collection for several months. And I, when I tried to reintroduce it into my routine, it just, left me wanting so, so much more. This formula was not overly volumizing and that's what it claims to do, but it also wasn't lengthening and it didn't offer like a really rich pigment to my eyes as well, but it just has like a very standard brush that I also found wasn't the best at allowing me to build up this mascara and get the impact that I want. So this is not one that I would recommend. It's very natural, underwhelming, I guess. And so, yeah, not one that I would recommend. It's not really for my personal taste. I like a little bit more drama, a little bit more volume, and it just didn't really, it, it missed the mark for me, if you know what I mean. And this next mascara is the Bite Beauty Upswing Mascara. It is a volumizing mascara formula, but it actually offers a lot of length as well. This was a really beautiful formula. And as you can see, this is a mini. It was actually um, like a free with a promo code from Sephora. So I got this for free as like a gift with purchase and I used it up in its absolute entirety. <laughs> I loved this so, so much. You can see it has kind of one of these hourglass style wands and I'm not sure what these kinds of wands do in terms of allowing for a good application, but this one, really, really made my lashes look super long, super luscious, super volumized, super dramatic without being clumpy or anything like that. They just looked so beautiful. And I think I opened this back in maybe April or May and I, I've used it up until it literally will not work anymore. It's starting to flake at this point pretty severely, but I did not want to part with it. This made my lashes just look so good. It's the mascara that I've been wearing primarily on my channel for the past few months and absolutely loving it. And this mini went a long way. So I would actually be very interested in trying out a full size of this in the future. I just have a lot of mascara backups to kind of work my way through. And even though I have a lot of mascara backups, I did not want to part with this. I didn't want to move on from this because I loved, love, loved the way that this looked on my lashes. And then the last mascara here is the CoverGirl Clump Crusher. This is the water resistant version. I've had this again open for several months at this point as well. I bought this when I was off of my no buy back in May. So that's a pretty good indicator of how long I've been using it because I opened it up the minute I got it. Even though I have mascara backups, I love to have one of these on, hands, on hand. I don't have one at the moment and I have a feeling I'm gonna be missing it very, very soon. I know it sounds so extra, but this is the best mascara for my lower lashes because it defines, it separates them, but it offers a little bit of kind of drama on my lower lash line that isn't too clumpy, not too heavy, but it still offers that little bit of something. And the water resistant formula is perfect for someone like myself who tends to have some issues with mascara transfer. This just is, Kind of a staple in my collection and it's something that i'm sure i'll pick up in the future i have purchased this for many years um, when covergirl wasn't cruelty free there was a little bit of a lapse in time when i didn't buy it but i purchased it many years ago back in high school or early 
university and then I ended up starting to purchase it again once CoverGirl went cruelty free and I will forever, forever and always purchase this. It has this very small rubber curved wand that I find just hugs my lashes so perfectly. I'm able to really get on my lower lashes without making a huge mess. And then it also offers a lot of lift when I use it on my upper lashes. I find it's not as dramatic as I like to go for on my upper lashes, but I do like the way that it looks, especially when I'm going for a little bit more of a natural kind of look and I don't want my lashes to necessarily be super dramatic and really in your face, but I still want a little bit of definition. I want them coated. I want them to look, you know, a little bit more fluttery than they do au naturel. So I love this stuff. I love it so, so much. It's forever going to be in my collection. I've also finished off two brow gels recently, which is shocking, but that's the beauty of being on a no buy is that not many new products are coming into my life. So I'm actually able to use up what I have. This is the e.l.f. Wow Brow. This is in the shade Neutral Brown. And it was a truly just neutral kind of color. This is what the applicator looks like. It's a very small wand that allows you to get a lot of precision and to be able to really properly kind of apply the product without getting a super messy application. And as you can see in the wand, there is some like fibers running through it. However, I'm not totally convinced that some of these are not just my brow hairs. Anyone else? I'm not sure. <laughs> But I did end up taking the stopper out of this so that I could use every last bit of it. It does look like there's a little bit on the wand, but that's just like dried up buildup at this point because I had it open for quite some time. And once you kind of take out the stopper, you introduce a lot more oxygen and a lot more air into the product. So it does seem to turn a little bit faster after that point. I did really like this. This is a very inexpensive brow gel that I think is totally, totally worth it. And it lasted me quite some time. And then I took out the stopper and it lasted me even longer. So I really enjoyed this. I think in the future, I will eventually end up repurchasing this once I'm off my no buy and once I've worked my way through a handful of other brow gels. So I've been focusing on using up the brow gels that I have, including this one, which I'm so stunned by myself by the fact that I've already finished this off. This is the Quo Beauty Brow Defining Gel. This one I have is in the shade Ash, which is a kind of cooler toned, deeper brown shade. And I loved the way that this looked through my brows. I love the way that this applied to my brows. It's so, so nice. And it's a very comparable wand to the one that the e.l.f. had, a very small targeted kind of wand that allows you to be very precise in your application. And this formula was really good. I found that with this formula in particular over some of my other brow gels, I don't know if it's the wand or if it's the pigmentation of this, but I was able to actually like use the tip of the wand to kind of like press down onto my brow and actually put some product down onto my skin, not just into the brow itself. So I could actually create a lot of definition, use this almost as a pomade in a way. And I really enjoyed it. Again, I took out the stopper from this product as well. I used the heck out of this and I ended up actually only purchasing it last year, I believe in September or October. And I flew through it because it's so good. I loved wearing this when I was wearing no other makeup or when I was wearing a full face of makeup, it offered still just the best brow game ever. I loved it. I'm definitely going to repurchase this in the future. If I were to have like a small wardrobe of brow gels as I do right now, these two would be, I think in the top for me, the top options. I would probably repurchase both of these and feel no need for any other formula. The nice thing about having neutral brown versus ash in my collection was the neutral brown one was a little bit softer. The color was just a, that little bit softer. So it looked more like a feathery brow and then ash gave me a little bit more of a defined kind of brow, if that makes sense as a co comparison. I've recently finished off a couple of eyeshadow products. The first one being this ColourPop Super Shock Shadow in the shade Crimper. This was a very soft golden shade. However, there's nothing really left to kind of share with you what it looked like. I might be able to pick up a little bit of dust, but nothing, nothing that notable. It was a very soft metallic gold really beautiful color um, that I could wear basically on an everyday basis. I finished this in my Partners in Cream Project Pan and it felt really good to work my way through a super, super shock shadow because at one point I had many of them, but I never really finished them off. So 
this was quite a challenge. It took me a long ass time to get through this, like so long to get through this. There's so much product in here. You might be able to hit pan on these pretty quickly, but it takes a long time to actually finish them up in their entirety. And it feels really good to finally be saying goodbye to it because it is something that I had in my collection for many years. I do like the Super Shock Shadow formula, but at these this point in my life, I don't feel like I need to have them because of the bulky packaging for one. I just find it so, so much plastic for a single pan of eyeshadow. And for two, I just have so many eyeshadows in palettes that I absolutely love that I just don't feel the need to buy any of these singles anymore. And this next eyeshadow is actually a liquid shadow by Cover FX. This is the Shimmer Veil in the shade Amethyst. It's such a beautiful, like, kind of soft, pinky lilac kind of shade, really unique color. You can see there is still product here in the bottom of the tube, but it has unfortunately at this point dried out to the point where I cannot use it. It just becomes like dusty. I really did enjoy this though. And you can see I scraped the heck out of it. I had it in my 20 favorites by 2020 project pan last year, used so, so much of it then, but even prior to putting it into the, that project pan, I had used so much of this because I just found this formula was absolutely gorgeous. It offered this beautiful shimmer finish that wasn't too dramatic, but was very apparent and very flattering on my eyes. And this color in particular was pretty unreal. I found it extremely, extremely flattering. Even though I'm not one to gravitate towards pinks and purples, it was really beautiful, like very brightening on the eyes. I loved it so much. I do think that the Shimmer Veils are one of the better liquid eyeshadow formulas, but personally, I've decided I'm not really going to be going into the world of liquid eyeshadows anymore. I just don't see the need to have them in my life. And then this always ends up happening. I took out the stopper a few times in order to kind of move around the product because the wand was no longer able to reach the product. But the more you open it up and you kind of smush around the product, the more that you're likely going to end up making these eyeshadows just become dust and to dry up. And that's an unfortunate side effect of the beautiful finish that you get with this. You can never finish these up in their entirety without either having to kind of like revamp it with a oil or unfortunately just letting it go bad like this. So. I just don't see the need anymore. Again, it's a lot of packaging for one single product. Same with how the Super Shock Shadows are. And I've just had that shift where I don't really feel any sort of need or desire to bring these kinds of products into my life, but I loved it. I really did love it. I also have a couple of really exciting products. If you watched my most recent Graveyard Project Pan update, then you know I finished off a freaking powder highlighter. This was a feat. I had used this in several project pans over the past few years, and I finally finished it off really recently, like last month. It is so amazing to have been able to finish this up. But in any case, this was the Wet n Wild Mega Glow Highlighting Powder in the shade Precious Petals. I should honestly have that memorized by this point, but I do not. I do not. This was a gorgeous kind of rose goldy kind of soft pink color that I found most flattering on me personally in the summertime. I found that it looked really nice with a beautiful, like warm, more tan complexion on me. However, I could wear it all year round. I just found that that base pigment kind of picked up a little bit more when I was at my most fair. This though, however, I will not be repurchasing. One, I just don't need any more powder highlighters in my life. I have a huge collection of powder highlighters that doesn't get used that much anymore. I just love to look at highlighter more than I love to put it on and use it up. I mean, I love the idea of using it up, but I just can't seem to get to the point where I actually use them up. And I'm no longer purchasing from Wet n Wild. This brand is just one that I don't really have a lot of trust in anymore. And as a consumer, I just don't really want to put my money into brands that I think kind of want to pull one over on the consumer every once in a while. I'm not, I'm not opposed to brands going into China to sell even though they were cruelty-free, but now they're no longer cruelty-free. I'm not really opposed to that anymore. I don't really think that we should be so discriminatory, I guess. However, the way they approached that kind of whole thing was just, it just wasn't cute to me, it wasn't good. So I don't wanna support this brand anymore, but yeah, it was beautiful. And I feel so freaking good to have used it up because highlighter takes, an eternity to use up. And this was 
quite a journey. This has been in many a project pan, so it's so nice. It's finally gone. Same thing with this, actually. This is the Becca Sunlit Bronzer in the shade Bronzed Bondi. This was just a mini that came in a Sephora 500 point perk alongside other Becca mini products. And actually, can we just have a moment to talk about um, Becca closing, but not really entirely closing? I mean, they did, like there's no longer a Becca brand, but what the heck? Like Smashbox picked up some of their products. Um, I know that they were both owned by Estee Lauder. So it, it kind of makes sense that it would be easy to just like move over to a different brand name. But do you kind of feel like that was a little bit sneaky? Any of you? I do. I really enjoyed this formula so, so much that I ended up actually repurchasing a full size of this even before I had finished this one off in a different shade, a little bit of a lighter shade than Bronze Bondi. This formula is very soft and easily blendable and looks effortlessly diffused on the skin. And I just found that it was so easy to work with and very natural looking yet impactful. Like it still made me look very bronzed. It worked very, very well, but it just looked very natural and effortless and very just softly diffused. But this was advertised to have only 1.7 grams and it took me a lot of work to get through this, using it as an eyeshadow and as a cheek product as well. I multi-purposed it and it still was forever never ending. And so it feels really good to have finished it up. And the very last product I have here is one that I finished off in my 30 by 30 project pan. This is the e.l.f. Lip Plumping Gloss in the shade Champagne Glam. Now, my intentions with that project is not necessarily to finish it up, but it ended up just being that this was something I was able to finish off in those 30 uses because I already had a ton of progress on it. I really like this product, so it was pretty effortless to work my way through it. It was a beautiful, like soft peach, slightly champagne-y kind of color with a ton of dimensional glitter that I felt, or not glitter, but like sh fine shimmer particles that I felt like made my lips look very nicely enhanced, but it wasn't evidently a glittery kind of lip gloss, if that makes sense. It also had a really good plumping kind of feeling on the lips. I wouldn't per se feel like it made my lips look more plumped. I don't think that a lot of products can do that for you, but it made them feel that kind of you know, tingly sort of sensation that I personally like. I know that's not for everyone, but I really enjoyed it. And I really like this. I think that in the future I will end up repurchasing this, but as I've said numerous times in this video, I am currently on a no buy and I'm really trying to work my way through my collection and reevaluate re after I'm done my no buy, what do I actually need in my life and what do I want to have in my collection instead of just amassing more and more makeup. And as a whole, it just really feels good to have used up all of these products and be able to kind of sit down and think about them a little bit more critically than just continually purchasing and purchasing things and see where they fit in my collection and in my life. And if I need something like that, I can really reevaluate after this journey of being on a no buy. And it feels good to look back on this so far and see how much products I've been able to work my way through instead of not finishing anything, but continuously bringing in new things. I'm happy that I'm no longer in that kind of mindset and in that space. And it feels really good to see this many things used up. Yes, it's a lot of packaging, which is a little bit daunting to me, but also it means that I've actually worked my way through things that I put my hard earned money into. And that feels really good because in the past, I used to just buy, buy, buy a lot of makeup and uh, I never really finished things to this kind of magnitude. So this feels really good. I'm really happy to see all of these empties in front of me. I hope that you enjoyed hearing some of my thoughts and reviews. I wanna say again, a huge thank you to Skillshare for sponsoring today's video and for all of you for watching today's video and allowing me to be at this point where I work with brands like Skillshare. It's truly something that I never really would have thought um, would be possible for someone like myself. I just. I've never taken YouTube seriously to the point where I thought it was ever gonna be a job. So this is really special to me. And honestly, I really appreciate your support by going to that link as well and trying out Skillshare for yourself. It, it truly does help me out quite a bit. So thank you so much for watching and for hanging out with me. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I'll see you in the next one. Bye everyone.